All right, coaches, this is Coach T with Single Wing Domination Football. In today's video, we're gonna cover part one of my three-day installation of the Single Wing Domination Offense. Before I go any further, I ask each and every one of you to hit that subscribe button. If you're a Single Wing coach, a Single Wing enthusiast, or just a coach looking to incorporate some Single Wing ideas into your style of offense, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. I wanna take a brief moment to thank each and every one of you for the positive feedback and the comments that you've given me off the first two videos that I put out on Power Versus Deception and on the Wabble Pass. You guys are giving me some great ideas for future content I wanna put out. And uh, I just wanna take a moment to say thank you. All right, okay. To begin this topic on the three-day installation, um, I'm a firm believer you can put this offense in in three days. We work everything off of series. So when coaches ask me, well, do you run this or do you run that in a single wing? I don't take everything and just uh, put it into one pot and I'm pulling different things out of different series. My suggestion to every coach is you find that one series or you can run two of them depending on what type of personnel you have and you base your install off of the series. The single wing offense, in my opinion, is very much like the wing tee that is series based, okay? So that's how I install everything in this offense, all right? To begin with, I wanna talk briefly about how we set everything up. Every school is gonna be a little different as far as your bell schedule is concerned. So for presentation purposes, I'm gonna use the schedule that I was on at my last school and um, how I use that schedule to help incorporate the installation process of this offense. All right, also for this day one installation, I'm gonna use our primary um, base offense, base series that I ran primarily that I had great, great success with and kind of you know got my name out there for a lot of things. Um, and that's my smash series, okay? That's the one I've gotten the most feedback on and the most comments and um, questions about. So in today's video, I'm gonna use that as my, uh, my template, okay? All right, based on the school I was at last, um, I do things a little bit differently, okay? And um, there's no one way of doing it. If it was, everyone would be doing it. So what I recommend is you do uh, what works best for you. So for instance, for me, I never use seventh period athletics for um, weight room. One is because we didn't have very much time. We were on a very short period schedule of about 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, I'm sorry, 50 minutes. But in the time that it took kids to get out of class, to get down to the locker room, change, use the bathroom, everything else, we were down to about 40 minutes at best. And it was a very tough time constraint to get them in there. Our weight room was not attached to the school. So to get them up there, get everybody set, get everything, we had about 25, 30 minutes left. It just wasn't, from a time efficiency point of view, it wasn't productive for, for us to try to squeeze in 25 minutes of weight work. The second issue we had with that was the fact that um, we didn't have all the players there for seventh period. Our freshmen were very constrained to their school schedule, where they, which didn't allow them a, a lot of time to come down for seventh period athletics. So what we did, we took seventh period athletics and we turned that into our special teams practice. Um, it's a third of the game. So as opposed to giving 10 minutes each week to it, um, each day to it, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, to one different aspect of special teams, I decided if we have 30 minutes, why not give that 30 minutes nothing but special teams? It worked out for us. I know this, you know, it was a lot more beneficial. We didn't have as many problems with, um, as a lot of coaches have, and please tell me if this has happened to you, when you get out there, you line, you call the kickoff team, you get out there, and instead of having 11 kids, you only got 10, or you got nine, two kids are missing. Somebody forgets they're on special teams. Well, by moving everything to seventh period, that helped us out a lot. We come out shirt and shorts, it's real loose, it's more 
teaching and getting things to kind of together in order. So anyway, we use that time for that. That frees up more time in our installation day to get more things done, okay? All right, so the question is, well, when do you get weight room time in? Well, when we finish practice, again, this may not be for everybody, but it's worked for me. When practice is over, we go to the weight room. We use that time after practice. The kids actually ask for it. After practice, they were wanting to go to the weight room. So we decided, hey, let's use that time for the weight room, all right? But that's what's worked for us and it gives us more time to focus on installation. All right, as it relates to our installation, this is what we do. As I said, this is part one of our day one install. All right, when you get ready to install this offense, and we're gonna base this off the Smash series, okay, there are certain things you wanna have in every series in the single wing domination offense, okay? Um, it doesn't matter which series. I have about six different series that you can run in this offense that I'm gonna have eBooks out for, I'm gonna talk about later. But in every series, here's some non-negotiables. Number one, you gotta have a base run. Okay, so our base run is a smash. That's gotta be your number one installation. You gotta have your base run in. Then you wanna have two protectors that you install. For our smash series, our two protectors are our sweep and our count. You wanna have one play action pass, which is our waggle. You wanna have one shot, one shot play. Our shot plays are our four verts. Now, we have a unique um, point of view when it comes to our shot play. Personally, I don't care if we don't complete it. It's designed to get everyone backed up. It's designed to make the defense respect the fact if you're going to give me a 10-man 10, 10 box, we see a lot of 10-1 and 9-2 defenses, just a bunch of crazy stuff, I'm going to back you up because all I have to do is hit it one time. It's going to back you up. So those shot plays actually are protectors for our base run, okay? And our two run protectors. So lastly, you also wanna have one screen, okay? In the Smash series, we have an X screen, a Y screen, and an F screen. But I've highlighted the X and the F screens because those are the two more successful ones. Now, we, we decided to put the, the screen in simply because of the fact teams want to blitz a lot. And prior to uh, two years ago, I didn't have one in. And team was just pinning their ears back and coming. And I remember saying to myself three years ago, God, if you ever just could put a screen in, it would be dangerous. And so we, we figured out you got to have a screen in there. So we incorporated a screen to his offense. The X and the F screen are the two primary ones. The Y screen is a little less effective. Um, from what we've seen because the Y is usually to the strong side where all the um, action usually is and where the defense has shifted in that direction. But it's there. And if nothing else, to keep the defense honest, okay? So, in review, for every series that we install, we're always going to have these non-negotiables. One base run, two protectors, one play action pass, one shot, and one screen. Okay, now let's cover how we do our, our installation. Okay, I've broken this down into the same script sheets that I give out to my assistant coaches that we plan out and everyone has this on hand when we're in practice. So I'm gonna kind of go over these things with you. All right, I'm also gonna have this stuff available in my eBooks for each series that I put out. Um, every series is gonna have an eBook, I mean, uh, every eBook for each series that I have out, we'll uh, have an installa practice installation, drills, the whole nine, okay? And again, I'm gonna talk about that in a later video, all right? But let's begin first with day one installation. All right, so day one, what you wanna put in, we're gonna put in day one, we're gonna put in our base run, one of the two protectors, all right? and one play action pass. That's all we're gonna cover in day one. All right, so it doesn't matter which of the protectors you use, but you gotta, you're gonna put at least one of them in. Always carry two. 
All right, so for today's purpose of this um, video, we're gonna install Smash. The protector we're gonna use is Sweep, and the play action pass is Waggle, okay? It's gonna be Waggle. All right, we start everything off. First of all, we do our warm-ups during special teams practice. We get everyone loose. We do static warm-ups, uh, dynamic warm-ups, you know, your A skip, B skip, C skips, your static stuff, which is a lot of your stretching and that kind of stuff. We do that in special teams, okay? I know a lot of coaches have said, hey, I heard coaches uh, say they don't use stretching anymore. The kid, let them do it on their own. No, uh, I guess that's the old school in me, which they're gonna, which they're gonna stretch, okay? All right, but we do it to where we don't take away from practice time in our installation. All right, we usually will start practice with 2.30 school. So we usually start practice at 2.30, okay? Um, that's the time we hit it um, because we finish up seventh period a little early and we get everybody out there. Any kids who are not there seventh period, we kind of, you know, I have one coach assigned that would just kind of get those kids out there and can we kind of work them in and get them dressed and get them out there if they come, okay? All right, day one installation, we do everything on a two hour practice schedule, okay? Our period of five minutes each, 24 periods is two hours. Meaning if we start at 2.30, we're done at 4.30, by 4.40, we wanna be in the weight room and out of the weight room about 5.30 in the afternoon, okay? So that's, two, that's basically two and a half hours of practice and good uh, weight room work. All right. Okay. We start off our first two periods are individual. We're going to do individual drills for smash. We're going to work 10 minutes on sweep and we're going to work 10 minutes of individual on wagon. Okay. I'm big on individual periods. All right. That gives us a good 30 minutes of individual where we're covering our three installations. Now, here's one thing that's important that we do that's a little different than every other coach does, and I'll explain why I do it this way, okay? For each one of these periods, during our 30 minutes of individual, no footballs. We don't bring any footballs out. All right, the reason why we do that, our individual period is used for focus and attention. I tell our coaches during this period of time, we're not trying to run them ragged. We're not trying to go rep, 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 rep during that period of time. I want it to be a teaching period. And we don't use footballs because for instance, for our waggle period, I found out that more time is, is, is spent with our guys throwing our left H or right H when they're getting ready to throw the football and they're trying to throw the drag or the flat or whatever, if they throw a bad pass and the ball hits the ground, they feel as though they lost the rep. If you try to throw any other pass route, they don't catch it. Receivers think they've lost the rep. Quarterbacks or my agents think they've lost the rep. So what we use that time with, we just go overthrowing motion. We want to make sure footwork is in place. We want to make sure the right depth on the rollout is in place. We want to make sure our receivers are hitting their landmarks, okay? Instead of catching balls, we use a version of the Manning drill that I saw at a Manning camp. When the receivers reach their destination, the quarterback simulates his throw. Receivers clap and put their hands up. So now the focus is on having your hands placed right, making sure you're at your landmarks. And I quote our H's who throw the ball can make sure their timing. They're not focused on the football. They're focused on the things that we as coaches want to preach to them. And sometimes it feels as though it's going in one ear and out the other one because they're not seeing the positive results. So we want to take out that element of mistake and focus on uh, perfection, all right? Timing and execution during that period of time. All right, so no footballs come out in the 30 minutes of individual. We're gonna use 10 minutes. That 10 minutes the only focus is on smash. For the next 10 minutes, the next um, all the focus is on sweep. And the next 10 minutes, all the focus is on waggle. Okay. All right, next, we transition that into group period. All right, we've done individual on our three um, concepts we're gonna install. Now we're gonna put it in the group. Okay, we're gonna have 15 minutes of group with smash. Okay, 
and then 15 minutes of group with sweep and 15 minutes of group with waddle. All right. Now, this is where we put kind of put things together. We have offensive linemen with backs. We have uh, receivers working with defensive backs on their blocking and just things of that nature. Now we bring the football out. Now we want to incorporate what we've done in individual. So those 10 minutes of individual with no football should reflect, you know, the 15 minutes here of group should reflect the work and the focus we put in in the 10 minutes of individual with smash. It should tie in together. Same thing with sweep. This should reflect the 10 minutes of that. And the 15 minutes here should reflect the 10 minutes of work we did right here in individual with WOW, okay? So now, now we're to period 16 and 17, 18 and 19. All right, this is our hashing session here. We've got five, 10, 15, 20 minutes of focus on hatch. I learned a long time ago that you need to spend all your practice working off of hashes because 85% of every play in uh, high school football or in a lot of football is coming off the hatch. But we always find ourselves as coaches trying to work from the middle of the field. Okay, so what we do, we use this time period and we use half line, okay? Whether I have a full complement of players where I can work team, I still use half line. I use half line for two reasons. One, it makes the focus easier. And secondly, um, if a day ever comes where I'm short on players or um, I'm in a program where, or you're in a program rather, where you don't have enough players to do a full team, Half line is always there for us to have in our back pocket and players are used to doing it as opposed to having to throw it in one day without, um, you know, being used to running that style of, of uh, practice, okay? So we put in half line, okay? And we work our formations off that. We're gonna work left hash and right hash, five minutes of sweep. I'm sorry, five minutes of smash. We're gonna work five minutes of sweep. And then we're gonna give 10 minutes to play action pass, which is our wow. And it's sort of a modified version of seven on seven. But what we do with it, we don't have our defensive backs and our linebackers to just get in their cover three or cover four drops or whatever. We make them simulate the action off of smash and sweep. So it's more like a flow. So if we're in our eight formation and we got smash going to our right, when that ball is snapped, now all we have out here are our receivers and our backs, our linebackers, and our secondary. All right? We want, we want to see them flow because this is an offensive period. This is not for our defense. We want to see our linebackers and our secondary flow. We work two, two types of flow. We work second-level flow and third-level flow. So our quarterbacks get a good read, okay? There are no linemen involved in this. Again, it's a modified version of seven-on-seven, seven, okay? And what I want, we want to work with our quarterbacks on their rollout action on Wabble, our receivers reaching their landmarks on Wabble, and our, it gives our quarterback a very good visual. I'm sorry, our H's, I got to keep with single wing uh, terminology. It gives them that visual where they can see how when that flow goes one way and receivers are running another, they get to see those wide open receivers. It has been very beneficial for us as you were able to see, if you watched my previous video on the uh, Wabble Pass, okay? All right, we finished that. Now we go to some team. We're gonna finish the last 25, 20 minutes of practice on team periods 20, 21, 22, and 23. And we work situational with it. And we have a script for it. We'll go ahead and script this where first 10 minutes is 20 coming out. So we're gonna assume the ball been kicked into the end zone. When 20 yard line balls in the middle of the field, we work our script. So I'm gonna call, I may call first play. I may say, all right, let's run sweep. We're gonna run sweep. All right, we're gonna run sweep. Now ball on the left hat on the uh right hash. If we're in our eight formation, if I come out nine formation, ball should end up on the left hash. Okay. For these 10 periods right here, we, we go against the defense, we go live. Our goal is to get to the 50 yard line. We're not trying to score, we're trying to get to the 50 yard line. That's our goal. All right, and we want to get there in five plays or less to the 50-yard line because we want to have that type of confidence in our offense. We have a non-negotiable, it's five yards. We're not three yards in a cloud of dust. It's five yards, okay? All right, 
Next, we turn around. I want to see our kids have some success. I want them to get used to uh, seeing positive results. So now we start at 20 going in, and you got five plays to get it in the end zone. Sometimes we reduce that number down to four, sometimes down to three, depending on how much pressure we want to put on them, okay? But that gives them 10 minutes. And now when they score, they see the success. They see the results of all this work they put in, all right? Lastly, we have our rapid fire period. Five minutes of rapid fire. So what rapid fire is for us, I'll incorporate into the script and I may say, okay, it's like a test. It's a, it's a test of what you just covered. So we'll bring them out, put them in our eight formation, nine formation and say, okay, here we go. All right, and I hit them with something real quick. I may go, okay, left guard, you're pulling, you got to squeeze, what do you do? All right, my H, you're rolling out. What's your depth on Wagga? My Y, we got Y Wagga call. What's your depth on either the drag or the post? We hit them with that stuff while they're tired. I want them to think. We got five minutes of that, and we come up with about 10 questions to hit the various positions to make sure they know what to do in situations. They got to think fast, think quick while they're tired. Okay? Sort of like shooting free throws at the end of a basketball practice. All right? So, coaches, in review, this is day one installation of our Smash series, how we install everything, how we put it all together. In the next video, I'm going to cover day two of uh, our three-day installation of the single-wing domination offense using Smash series as our template. Coaches, once again, I want to thank you for watching this video. I ask you again uh, to make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're a single wing enthusiast or just a coach looking to incorporate some single wing ideas into your offense, um, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like button. Um, I've had a few coaches ask me for more content, a little more in-depth stuff on, on this series in particular and some of our passes and things of that nature. Um, in the description is the link the DVD bundle and streaming bundle I have with Championship Productions. Be sure to hit that. Um, go check that site out. Uh, feel free to purchase any one of those DVDs that I have over there. It'll give you a lot of great content that I can't squeeze into about 10 minutes here in this video. Once again, guys, this is Coach T with Single Wing Domination Football.